Are you talking about people like Edward Teller and the yes, like? Yes, I, I traveled once with, to Europe with Edward Teller. The two particular, the t- particular I was people I was speaking of was Richard Garwin uh-huh. who, with Edward Teller but it was really Garwin's design designed the uh, I said the first thermonuclear bomb that is one that that combined fission and fusion and right. it blew up an island in the Pacific Ocean it was very successful and much more powerful very, than the original much about bombs, thousand, thousand uh, right. times yeah. more powerful um, and the other guy was the a person who was very instrumental in putting the first um, essentially cell phone type cameras, digital cameras, onto our spy satellites. Our old spy satellites in the old days would take pictures on film, and then when the film was all exposed, they would separate it from the satellite, put a little rocket on it, the rocket would slow it down, it would fall down to Earth, deploy a parachute, and we'd fly an airplane next to the parachute with a hook on it. Right. And the hook would grab the parachute, reel in the film, we'd fly it to, what in those days the CIA did all of that interpretation, right, right outside of Washington, Anacostia, Washington, they'd fly it, they'd develop it, and they'd count how many Russian missiles and so forth. So that was the guy who was instrumental in turning that film system into a digital system. Mm-hmm. So they were the two, that's the two specific people, Richard those are Garwin both and Both pretty big, pretty big technologies. Yeah, yeah, and those two happened to be the two who said to me, why don't you go to Washington for just one year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turned out to be 37. <laughs> just one year and work on a problem that was a big deal at that time, Barry, which was a Cold War problem of where to, what to do with the MX missile. How- I recall that. That was uh, under Reagan trying to yes. figure out How we could hide and shuttle all these missiles underground to hide them from Russian satellites. So couldn't target them. Right. So I think the original plan, and and I I don't remember how much of this is from your book and how much of this is male memory, that 4,500 silos, we're going to shuttle 500 missiles around. Pretty impossible plan. Uh, it was certainly very unpopular because it would have paved over a big part of the Great Basin area of the southwestern right. United States. Uh, it was actually the Carter administration's plan. Mm-hmm. Reagan looked at it and said that looked said it looked like a Rube Goldberg thing. Right. Uh, so that was a, to him a pretty ugly baby. This idea of of digging all these holes and then hiding missiles in them. So he began. And this to is all under. The concept of being able to survive a first strike in order to make sure mutual assured destruction was in, in place. Exactly, because if we took the MX missile and we put them out where the Soviets could hit them, then in a crisis, they'd say, well, our only way of surviving is to go first. Right. And that would be an incentive to, for them to go first. And we, seeing them thinking that way, would say, well, we better, get ri- we better launch these before they destroy them. Coming up, we continue our conversation with former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, author of the new book, Inside the five-sided box discussing the Iraq war. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So, for the love of the outdoors, go to smokybear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. With the Bloomberg Small Business Report, I'm John Tucker, brought to you by Dell Small Business. It often makes good business sense to delay paying suppliers, keeping cash free for other purposes. 
And now the concept is being taken to new levels of complexity. A global industry has grown up of financial go-betweens who buy unpaid invoices at a discount. The firms give vendors cash sooner than if they'd waited for customers to pay if they're willing to accept less than what they're owed. Financiers say the practice known as supply chain financing is a win for all sides. But small business advisors call it supply chain bullying. They compare supply chain financing to throwing a life jacket to somebody you've just chucked overboard. And they say there would be little need for it if companies only adopted prompt payment practices. Supply chain financing isn't new. What is new are the growing number of emerging financing platforms pushing it on suppliers. And that's the Bloomberg Small Business Report. Imagine carving your way through the fresh snow falling right now in the French resort of Val d'Isère. Fly to Geneva and head to the slopes from only $29.99. Book now with EasyJet. One-way per person, limited availability. See EasyJet.com. There are plenty of parties over the festive period. They'll have food and drink, music too. Some will even have rides and fireworks. But one has all that, plus a big something extra. Big Game 12 is London's biggest rugby party. To watch Harlequins take on Leicester Tigers from just £17 a ticket for children and £27 for adults, go to tickets.quins.co.uk or search Big Game 12. Kick off 4.30pm, Saturday 28th of December, Twickenham Stadium. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can feel your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Rent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama. Let's talk a little bit about... uh, the Iraq War, and you go into a, quite a bit of detail in the new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. What made the Iraq War such a unique fight relative to previous U.S. military uh, history? Well, um, from a, a managerial point of view, mm-hmm. the point of view that the, the book takes, uh, it was a counterinsurgency war rather than a war of one country with another. Asymmetrical so, warfare, is so that we the had right to phrase? Learn, yes. Uh, so the first thing is we had to learn that. Uh, by, by the way, I should back up a little bit, Barry, and say, of course, that the invasion of Iraq in 2003 didn't turn out very well, mm-hmm. history says. I have to say I didn't have the wisdom to oppose that at the time. I believe... Many people did not. I, I, I'm, I count myself among them, and I'm not proud of that, but uh, I, I can't say I had better wisdom than anyone, anyone else. Anyway, we found ourselves in in Iraq, and of course, when I became uh, first the number three in the department, then the number two, then the number one, all during all that time, we were still fighting in Iraq. And uh, here's what we got out of it that um, uh, was in a way useful to today's uh, very different strategic situation. Uh, We learned to stop working in the old Cold War mode, which was, uh, that is, was very slow. Superpower versus superpower. Superpower versus superpower. Moreover, the Soviet Union was this slow, lumbering, very predictable thing. Uh And so you could have many-year programs where you slowly built the perfect thing. When you're at war... And people are getting killed, or or 
kids are coming back with no legs, and my wife right. and I are at the hospitals every weekend, talk, you know, meeting with them and talking, talking to them. Uh, there, then you're working day by day. That's a very different pace, sure. and it's much better suited to today's competitive world. Because mm-hmm. now, as we turn back to China, Russia, as we much do, we have. If we did that and tried to compete with them today in the old mode. That wouldn't work because people are moving faster today. Mm-hmm. Technology is moving faster. So, I again, n- nobody likes to be in a war for that long. Nobody likes to be dealing with uh, issues like uh, uh, amputations and prostheses, uh, PTS, all the things we had mm-hmm. to learn. But we also learned something about agility in the course of Iraq and then, of course, Afghanistan as well. And I was all in when I was in the Defense Department. I know some people... Don't agree with those wars, and we can talk about that later. But when you're there and you're responsible for them, uh, that was my highest priority every day. I went to bed thinking about them. I woke up thinking about them. There's no choice. So let's talk a little bit about some of the adaptations that some took place fast, some took place slow. Um, One of the things you write about are are the IEDs, and, Mm -hmm. and two really interesting issues come up in that. The first is the concept of drones versus blimps. Yep. That some yeah. people on the ground wanted drones, which really are good at flying in circles for short periods mm-hmm. of time. But you wanted full, there aren't a lot of roads in Iraq, you wanted full coverage of yeah. where insurgents are bringing IEDs that could hurt troops. Yeah. How did that process go from... Let's get these expensive drones that'll take two years to get into place to, no, no, we could hang blimps that'll take us a a really short period of time and have eyes in the sky on on everything. It it began one morning when Bob Gates was secretary. He was the number one. I was the number three at that time. And on the, and we were having a video teleconference, secure video teleconference Mm -hmm. with Kabul. And up on the screen was Stan McChrystal, who was our commander there. Right. And Stan says to Bob that he needs, he has only 15% of the drone coverage he needs. And Bob Gates looks at me with that, I was his top supply weapons buyer. Right. And he said, with that, what are you going to do about that, Ash? Look right. over. And I thought to myself, how on earth am I going to get seven times the number of drones? So in a very short period of time. In a very short time. period of time. So I get on the phone and I talk to Stan's intelligence head mm-hmm. at that time, who was General Mike Flynn. Right. <laughs> this is pre... Oh, way before pre the issues. whole issues right. with uh, this is, his... This getting, is pre-politics. Yeah, right, right. And uh, and, and I, he had a good reputation as did, a military did, intelligence He did, guy. and I enjoyed working with him. Yeah. I don't know what happened later. I, 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 I lost touch with him. But anyway, when I began to... I said, geez, what do you, what do you need all that coverage for, that drone coverage? And it turned out that it wasn't to get the kind of film that only a drone could get. Only a drone can fly down a long highway. Um, But they wanted persistent coverage over one base or one town. That's what they really needed. And satellites are going by Yeah, satellites are zipping by, and they're over Australia when you really need them. (laughs) Drones you can do, but you have to... They're much more expensive, and you have to fly them around in circles. Right. So, and you need a pilot, even if they're remote A pilot in the US, who's back right. in California, as it turns out. But yeah, a well-trained pilot and a crew and somebody to make all the decisions. Very different. We, we came up with the idea of just putting a balloon up. And you put a helium-filled balloon over the base. It's got a camera on it. And the feed goes right down to the captain uh-huh. who is commanding that little outpost. And the reassurance that those guys had that when they went out on patrol, they knew what the local. This is were full doing video, in. infrared, the yes, whole spectrum. Exactly. Now, you, why couldn't you, those the, just the get... kind of cameras that are on the um, the the helicopters that fly uh-huh. around looking look, looking at car accidents, sure, and traffic patterns. That so, kind of why thing. couldn't those just get shot out of the sky? Be, it, it's they tried, and here's uh, first of all the pressure of the helium inside is not very much. Uh-huh. There's so a it's lot not going to pop when it's... It's not going to pop. And so every once in a while, you winch it down and sew up the holes. That's it. It's, it. it's, it's not a big... <laughs> but the enemy, the bad guys, would, when it went up, not knowing that, 
take pot shots at it, we began to put um, microphones on that could identify. Triangulate? Yes, triangulate. <laughs> and so if you took a shot at one of our balloons, a mortar shell fell on you a few seconds later. Coming up, we continue our conversation with former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, discussing his new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. My mother was very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Startups and research universities like New Jersey Institute of Technology are fueling the innovation economy. And few people are better positioned to see what's on the horizon in New Jersey than physicist and state representative Andrew Zwicker. How technology is transforming our financial sector is revolutionary. And so much of that is in New Jersey. We are innovators when it comes to agriculture. And there is opportunity now for great transformation in how are we going to grow food in an ever-growing population. And how do we turn urban centers into agricultural centers? Autonomous vehicles is another one where we have some of the world's leading experts and how this will transform how those who are either elderly or are visually impaired or mobily impaired can start to use autonomous vehicles to transform their lives and have access to transportation they could have never had before. NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology. Learn more at njit.edu slash research. Asset managers who seize change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. I'm Steve Meyer, President of SEI's Investment Manager Services. At SEI, we understand the emerging forces that will define success for asset managers and what firms will need to compete tomorrow. That's why we continually optimize SCI's global operating platform. If your business requires greater agility, our advanced technology, integrated best-in-class systems, and multi-asset expertise can be your catalyst for business transformation. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. You can imagine carving your way through the fresh snow falling right now in the French resort of Val d'Isère. Fly to Geneva and head to the slopes from only $29.99. Book now with EasyJet. Dream, dream, dream. One way per person, limited availability. See EasyJet.com. When Harlequins take on Leicester Tigers, it's always a big game. But this year, it's the big game. Hosted at Twickenham, you can expect fireworks on the field and off it. Pre-kick-off, enjoy music, entertainment and a truly incredible atmosphere. Then watch two Gallagher Premiership rugby giants go head-to-head. Tickets from just £17 children, £27 adults. Go to tickets.quins.co.uk or search Big Game 12. Kick off 4.30pm, Saturday 28th of December, Twickenham Stadium. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. Wow, so many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to 3, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. So if your party wins, can we expect a healthier NHS? (laughs) Even with an ageing population? (laughs) But what what about privatisation? (laughs) With all the parties promising more NHS funding, how will they pay for it? From the NHS to taxation, the Times and the Sunday Times will guide you through. Pick up your copy today or visit thetimes.co.uk. For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive. And helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, 
shops small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small, only by American Express. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut, bird swoop, gazelles leap. And as the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk It's the perfect moment for Christmas shopping at Bista Village. It's magical savings at Bista Village with an additional up to 40% off the village price at participating boutiques. Magical savings from Thursday the 28th of November to Monday the 2nd of December. Magical savings. The pleasure of luxury for less. Bista Village, the perfect place for Christmas shopping. Now the news. Wall Street's closed today, but global markets are taking a hit over worry of a possible threat to U.S.-China trade talks. China reacting with anger after President Trump signed into law legislation mandating sanctions on Chinese and Hong Kong officials who carry out human rights abuses in Hong Kong. China saying countermeasures are coming. Crowds are already forming along the parade route through Manhattan for this morning's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with one big question in mind. Will the wind keep the giant balloons from flying? More on that from Miguel Marquez. I would have said there was there was no way on earth these balloons would go up the way the wind was howling. But right now, it is calm, cool, and collected here along the parade route. They are now trying to figure out, and they will make that call very close to parade time. North Korea has fired two projectiles into its eastern waters. No word yet on where they were or where they landed. Fire officials say they don't know how long that chemical plant in Port Neshis, Texas, will continue to burn after a series of explosions yesterday. I'm Michael Toscano. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. Asian stocks along with European and U.S. futures slipped after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong protesters. The move brings another threat of retaliation from China and raises concerns about the prospect for an interim trade deal. The White House pushed Wednesday to wrap final negotiations with Democrats on the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. Yesterday's meeting broke up without a USMCA deal announcement, but Mexico and Canada say there was some progress. Well, after soaring to a record last year, prices for fresh Christmas trees will probably rise again in 2019. Bloomberg's Courtney Donahoe has more. Supplies for trees are historically tight and demand is increasing, according to the National Christmas Tree Association. In 2018, fresh trees fetch $78 on average. That's the highest in data going back to 2008. If you're looking for a bargain, it may make sense to get your tree later in the season. Sales data compiled by Square showed that tree buying season kicks off on Black Friday with prices peaking on Cyber Monday and then declining until Christmas Eve. Courtney Donahoe, Bloomberg Radio. A lot of folks are going to be heading to the movies this weekend. Frozen 2 is expected to keep its number one ranking at the box office with an estimated $85 million over the holiday weekend. That's according to Box Office Pro. Lionsgate's Knives Out is expected to come in second with $20.3 million. Fox's Ford versus Ferrari should place third with $15 million. Stocks in London are down about four-tenths of one percent. In Germany, down a third percent. And the CAC 40 in France down two-tenths. In Japan, the Nikkei down a tenth. The Hang Seng down 60 points, down about a quarter percent. CSI 300 in China down a third. Global News, 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense uh, under President Barack Obama. He is the five-time winner of the Department of Defense Distinguished Public Service Medal, the highest award they give to a civilian. He is the director at the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs at the Harvard Kennedy School. Let's talk a little bit about the new book, which I found quite intriguing. Um, but first, I have to give you a quote of yours that I think is quite fascinating, which relates to the Pentagon and Washington, D.C. and what life was like. 
you describe working in D.C. as, quote, being a Christian in the Coliseum, you never know when they're going to release the lions and have you torn apart for the amusement of onlookers. How accurate is that description, and and how frustrating is it to work in a town like D.C.? Well, I got used to it after a while. I was there for 37 years on and off and associated with the department uninterruptedly since So they never really released the lines that you did that? No. Uh, I went through four Senate confirmations, which was mm-hmm. really what I was talking about in that particular uh, passage. And that's a time of great vulnerability in Washington because anybody who doesn't like you can take a shot at you right. then or try to persuade some senator to put a hold on. You came up unanimously uh, for Secretary yes, of Defense. Uh, that's not many people. Yeah, that's actually, quite... I think there were two or three votes, not personal about me, uh-huh. but... but uh, that... Nobody voted against you. Either no. they abstained yeah, or they yeah. voted yeah. for you. Not a lot of people in D.C. get that sort of love from the U.S. Senate. Uh, no, but, but there... I mean, I tried to earn it the old-fashioned way. Mm-hmm. I uh, kept my nose clean and all those years I never had it was investigated or right. or, or anything I never now ever... that's the normal course these days that seems to be a little unusual but typically people working in the defense department tend to put their head down do their job and keep their nose clean yes and conduct is really important the, the, the in the the profession of arms honor and trust matter a lot and if you can't trust people in small things how can you trust them in big things sure. like war so for us it was a big deal and when you're at the top you have to show example and so it was a, yeah, i always watched over my conduct and comportment and tried to make an example let me give you let me give you a particular instance of that that i describe in the book uh barry um when I, in many, many, many times, was in Iraq and Afghanistan, and that is hot, it's 120 degrees. Mm-hmm. If I was Secretary of Defense, you'd, you'd see the see foreign leaders, you'd talk especially to our commanders and what we're doing and, and give them the direction that they needed. And then I'd meet with hundreds and hundreds of troops, and you'd shake their hands and so forth. And I'd wear my suit. Uh, out in the desert. Suit and tie, 120 degrees. Suit and tie, 120 degrees, sweating like a wheel of cheese out there. (laughs) And uh, my staff would say, hey, uh, sir, you you know, you can take your jacket off. And the troops would say, hey, it's just us, Mr. Secretary, you can relax. And I always kept my suit on, and here's why. Because every time I shook one of those soldiers' hands, we had a photographer take a picture. Right. That picture would be sent home to mom. Right. Mom would frame it and put it by her bedside right, or on the mantle. And I wanted to look the part. I wanted to look like You still the look secretary. the part. Well, I do. I have my suit on and my flag, and I wear... And I would wear the same thing out there because I thought it was important that there mother understand that I was the, the of course she doesn't know me she doesn't know the secretary right. she doesn't care she cares about her son right but, but her I son is standing look, next to I someone I need to in... look like the guy who right. deserves to be sending her son to war that was mm-hmm. important to me and that's a small example of how you behavior comportment conduct matter a lot I think they matter in, not only in the largest organization in the world the Pentagon but in any kind of organization and I, I obviously um, uh, am dismayed uh, at times these days about uh, conduct I see um, and I held people to a higher standard and I fired people for things that you see today, we fired people for lying, for having sex with subordinates. All of these things were, were un- unfortunately happened, mm-hmm. um, but there was no doubt. I was harsh on people, but they were even harsher on subordinates. Our rules are very strict about that, and um, our ethos is uh, one of where conduct uh, is a sign of character, and character is an uh, incredible an aspect of leadership and you can't give somebody leadership over troops if they don't have conduct and they don't have character coming up we continue our conversation with ash carter former secretary of defense under president barack obama discussing the future of warfare you're listening to masters in business with barry Ritholtz on bloomberg radio 
One in three adults has prediabetes. That means it could be you, your best man, your worst man. <gasps> Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org to know where you stand. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Why do hedge funds and other alternative managers rely on Pershing? Mark Alderati, a managing director at BNY Mellon's Pershing and head of Prime Services, explains. In today's environment of market volatility, Pershing's Prime Services is well positioned to support the needs of hedge funds and other alternative investment managers. Whether it's customized financing or securities lending solutions, platform access, or business expansion, BNY Mellon's Pershing is a prime broker who's committed to this business and agile enough to meet your evolving demands. Pershing helps to solve the needs of clients by advocating for them, providing unwavering strength, deep supply, and award-winning service that is at the core of everything we do. Find out what sets Pershing's prime brokerage team apart. Learn more about the unique and industry-leading solutions for hedge funds and other alternative managers offered by BNY Mellon's Pershing. Visit our website at pershing.com. Pershing LLC, member FINRA, NYSE, SIPC. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. If there's one thing you look forward to most on Thanksgiving, besides stuffing yourself with bottomless mashed potatoes and gravy, oh yeah, it's football. And wherever you are at game time, you can catch the NFL's epic Turkey Day triple feature on TuneIn. This Thursday, starting at 1230 Eastern, don't miss the back-to-back-to-back lineup of Bears v. Lions, Bills v. Cowboys, and Saints v. Falcons. Whether you're driving to the in-laws or carving the bird, search NFL on TuneIn to hear the holiday action. Happy Thanksgiving. On behalf of all of us here at TuneIn. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Hope you saved room for some great listening. Your live sports, on your drive to your family's house, or set some relaxing dinner music. Just open your TuneIn app and have a great turkey day. (laughs) Introducing a new podcast, ESPN Daily. When you want to go beyond your feed, when you want to get inside the score, when you want to get behind the highlight. There's ESPN Daily. Go deeper into the stories of the moment. Get the exclusive access and insider perspective that only ESPN can give you. ESPN Daily. Hosted by me, Mina Kimes. Listen now to ESPN Daily on TuneIn. In the stock market and in life, everything can change from one minute to the next. Be the first to hear the latest money news and market trends with CNBC on TuneIn. Wherever your day takes you, Listen to CNBC's full slate of programming, including shows like Fast Money, Squawk Box, and Mad Money with Jim Cramer. And when the next big business story breaks, CNBC lets you know with live updates and commentary. At the office, at home, or on the go. Search CNBC on TuneIn to listen. The puck drops. Twelve players face off to win. The suspense is pure torture, but you wouldn't miss this for the world. Tune in brings you every minute of the NHL season. Listen live to hockey when it matters most on TuneIn. Did you know your favorite radio stations are in your pocket? Yes, the TuneIn app lets you listen to the same radio stations you pick up on your home or car radio anywhere you want. To see all the stations broadcasting in your area, find the local radio section on the home screen. Keep it local with TuneIn. Ah, finally another commercial, said no one ever. Visit TuneIn.com slash premium to upgrade now and get over 45 commercial-free music stations. From ESPN and the award-winning producers of The Sterling Affairs comes the latest season of 30 for 30 podcasts. 
four brand new stories of espionage. He wanted this team to be the Barcelona of women's basketball. Resilience. I started to scream. I tried to get away. Corruption. It's the culture of win at all costs. And rebirth. How will we ever rebuild it? 30 for 30 Podcasts, Season 6. Listen in favorite 30 for 30 podcasts on TuneIn. To LeBron, slam dunk! The NBA is on TuneIn Premium. Each week, TuneIn picks an NBA game you just can't miss. The Utah Jazz are north of the border to take on the defending champions, Toronto Raptors. Hard pulls back, trying to make it 11 to 2. Kawhi Leonard is all over the place. This Sunday, the Utah Jazz are at the Toronto Raptors. Tip off is at 6 p.m. Eastern. Search NBA on TuneIn to follow your favorite NBA team today. The news. Wall Street's closed today, but global markets are taking a hit over worry of a possible threat to U.S.-China trade talks. China reacting with anger after President Trump signed into law legislation mandating sanctions on Chinese and Hong Kong officials who carry out human rights abuses in Hong Kong. China saying countermeasures are coming. Crowds are already forming along the parade route through Manhattan for this morning's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade with one big question in mind. Will the wind keep the giant balloons from flying? More on that from Miguel Marquez. I would have said there was there's no way on earth these balloons would go up the way the wind was howling. But right now, it is calm, cool, and collected here along the parade route. They are now trying to figure out, and they will make that call very close to parade time. North Korea has fired two projectiles into its eastern waters. No word yet on where they were or where they landed. Fire officials say they don't know how long that chemical plant in Port Neshis, Texas, will continue to burn after a series of explosions yesterday. I'm Michael Toscano. I'm Barry Ritholtz. This is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Ash Carter. He is the former Secretary of Defense under President Barack Obama, and he is the author of a new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. So, so let's talk about some of the interesting things you go over in the book. Um, I'm fascinated by the future of warfare. Is it just going to be... Drones and robots, what sort of battles are we going to be fighting? And how is the world going to look different from a military perspective than it does today? So let's take a few of the pieces. Okay. Um, I ran the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter program. Okay. I started the new B-21 Stealth Bomber. And I think those are, uh, once you get them under managerial control, important things. But Barry, they're the last manned fighter and manned bomber will ever build. Last man aircraft. That's what I believe. Wow. I think that's the last time. What about ships? Are we we'll going to still it. have manned well, ships? Let's take the aircraft carrier. Now, air- aircraft carriers are getting harder and harder to defend mm-hmm. against countries like China and Russia. And people ask me, is the aircraft carrier going to go away? And I say, no, because an aircraft carrier is good for a different kind of circumstance. Mm-hmm. An aircraft carrier is still good with the with respect to Afghanistan, mm-hmm. the counter ISIS campaign, environments in which nobody's going to sink the ship. They right. provide America a floating air base, and that's an important thing. But I don't think we'll be trying to use them against China and Russia decades from now. Soldiers, you just said, are robots going to be mm-hmm. soldiers? I think what will happen first is that in an, in an infantry squad, there'll be one or two robots that carry oh, all the batteries <laughs> right. that weigh down soldiers today. They have so much electronics and they have spare batteries for everything uh, that carry the electronics and also that if they're, let's say, clearing a house is the first thing through the door of the house. Right. And you see a little of that already because what what disarms an IED now? Those to little years shredded, yeah. small yeah. Roomba I, tanks. I worked, I, I worked on them because we had people walking out in suits with a pair of wire cutters. Right. Very dangerous thing to be doing. And so why not have a little robot do So you see, now I think that there'll be inch by inch more and more of that, taking away some of the more mechanical mm-hmm. and more dangerous Jobs, but there'll still be a squad commander, I think, making the decisions about fire and maneuver and when to do things and when not to do uh, things. One thing that's not going to go away, if we're talking about things that are going to go away, mm-hmm. one thing that's not going to go away 
or nuclear weapons. Right. And let's think about that a little bit because that is uh, something that because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and the fact that many people, not myself among them, but many people recognized too late that China and Russia were not turning out the way everybody had hoped in the 1990s. We hoped they were going to turn out okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't turn out okay. And uh, for both those reasons, we stopped improving or really just keeping up our own nuclear arsenal. And in the meantime, they kept building, kept building, kept building. These things aren't going anywhere. Now, I don't think we need new types. I don't. The nuclear weapons are just brutally simple. Right. And, a bomb on a rocket. Uh, right. Um, but I think we need them to defend ourselves. And basically, to, the only way you can defend yourself against nuclear weapons is through deterrence. And um, uh, we haven't built any for 25 years. I think I am a strong supporter of recapitalizing our nuclear weapons weapons arsenal and anybody who thinks that's going to start an arms race i would say well you don't have 25 years of history on your side because we haven't done anything for the last 25 right. years and they've been racing anyway so we so, can't be the cause of them so let's stick with nukes and talk about korea mm -hmm. you were involved as a very junior person back yeah. in 93 94 yeah. Yeah. with the first round of korea trying to get a nuclear yeah. weapon why uh, this is hindsight bias obviously but why don't we just stop them back then, 25 years ago, before they had the chance to retaliate? Well, it's interesting. I, want, I spent about half the year 1994 as an assistant secretary of defense. Meaning, work, where is that in the hierarchy? Uh, that's like the third layer down. Okay. Uh, working on a strike plan against the North Korean reactor, which is all they had. Really? There. The reactor at a place called Yongbyon. And it had the fuel rods that had plutonium in them. And the they had finished their fueling cycle. And the North Koreans could, if they wanted to, take those fuel rods out, extract the plutonium, and they had enough in there to make one bomb. Right. We thought that was a cause of war. Right. And so I built that plan to destroy that reactor, which I was at the time, Barry, and this is just the, uh, uh, the, the pride of the artist, I guess, proud of because it would have destroyed an operating nuclear reactor without creating a radioactive plume. Um, but I, but Maybe. They, well, Hopefully. No, uh, I was pretty certain. I was yeah. pretty certain. Now, of course, I didn't want to do that. Because the certain result of that would be the North Korean army streaming over the DMZ mm -hmm. and a war beginning, which I was confident we would win. But, but millions would die. At Seoul would change hands twice. Right. And it, it's an ugly baby right. uh, <laughs> as a war to contemplate. But I thought that was going to happen. And Clinton was. Oh, really? One, yes. And he was threatening that to who's the grandfather of the current guy, Kim right. Jong Un, that you see meeting with President Trump. His grandfather, Kim Il-sung, was running the place then. Right. And Kim Il-sung rather unexpectedly said, okay, I'll give up this reactor at Yangbyon if you build me some real Western reactors. Power plants. That can, or power plants and that don't have all the proliferation problems right. that these reactors And did we do that? And we signed that agreement and it stayed in force for five, six years. The North Koreans under his son slowly began cheating. Right. And the whole thing kind of began to fall apart later in the night. Well, we bought ourselves sort of five, six years. Then we had talks again in the late 90s. I was part of them. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, let's see, uh, Condi Rice and and Colin Powell had some more in 2006. So I've seen various cycles of this. And what about the current cycle? Well, uh, that's not, unfortunately, going anywhere. I don't object to talking to the North Koreans. As I said, we've done it in the, in the past. Um, no president that I worked for, going back to Reagan, would meet with the North Korean leader unless and until there was an agreement. Explain sign. why. Because they knew that to the North Koreans, that was a huge gift, mm -hmm. a meeting with the American president. Because in North Korean propaganda, 
they, they can tell their people everything's okay and our system, which is a disaster for right. the North Korean people, is actually successful because I got to meet with the American president. Look, look at us, we're the equivalent yeah. of a superpower. So when you're dealing with a potential enemy, you don't, in Ash Carter's book, you don't give away anything for free. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't give away a meeting with the president of the United States for free. Without some exchange now, of... Yeah, now we gave, now we've given it away. Mm -hmm. We also stopped or curtailed our exercises in South Korea, right. which is a very dangerous move. Remember, the exercises are how we keep us and our South Korean partners sharp mm -hmm. to make it the North Koreans absolutely clear that if they start a war, they will be destroyed. And that'll be the end of the regime. And that's what those exercises mm -hmm. demonstrate to to not keep up that proficiency and not keep demonstrating it risks a war on the Korean Peninsula, which, as I said, would be a war we would win, but would not look like anything our people have seen since the last Korean War. I mean, the intensity of the violence is unbelievable in that war. Although some people have argued that the North Korean troops, once they're over the border, might not be as aggressive a uh, enemy as some people have suggested, similar to the Iraqi uh, National Guard. Well, it's interesting. Um, you don't have much evidence on your side if you have that view. Pure speculation. Well, here's some evidence that goes, the, but it all goes the other way. North Korean agents, military agents, captured uh -huh. in South Korea who have been preparing sabotage and other things that they intend to do in the course of the war like that. Um, very few of they're all so brainwashed, right? That they they. Do not turn compliant. They don't come down into this well-lit, wealthy society and change their views, mm -hmm. even though all of their propaganda and all of their media and so forth have told them that it's a poor and backward place. So if you think about it, Barry, they're in their third or fourth generation of Stalinism. Wow. No other society had that many generations. What that means is that your parents don't tell you stories of how things used to be different. Right. Your grandparents don't tell you stories. There's nowhere if you're a that child. That memory is up, gone. That, that memory is gone that there's a different kind of world. So I, 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 I think the evidence suggests these people are brainwashed deeply enough that they'll fight really hard before they get tempted by all the goodies down in South Korea. We have been speaking with Ash Carter, former Secretary of Defense and author of a new book, Inside the Five-Sided Box, Lessons from a Lifetime of Leadership in the Pentagon. If you enjoy this conversation, well, be sure and come back for the podcast extras where we keep the tape rolling and continue discussing all things defense-related. You can find that at iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever finer podcasts are found. We love your comments, feedback, and suggestions. Write to us at MIB podcast at Bloomberg.net. Give us a review on Apple iTunes. You can check out my weekly column on Bloomberg.com. Follow me on Twitter at Ritholtz. I'm Barry Ritholtz. You're listening to Masters in Business on Bloomberg Radio. Rich. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut. Bird swoop. Gazelles leap. As the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk For the independent bookseller who found you that first edition. For the baker who brings the smell of freshly baked bread to your door. And for the barista who never needs to ask your name. We've all got a part to play. Every little tap keeps your high street alive and helps your communities thrive. So if you love where you live, shop small. Shopping on your local high street can make a big difference. Shop small. Only by American Express. On three, our unlimited data is actually unlimited, like four reels. That means you can scroll and scroll and scroll through all the Black Friday deals. Because we have no speed limits, no data caps, and you'll be 5G ready at no extra cost. 
Wow. So many savings. Our Black Friday deals are now on. Save up to £480. Switch to three, in-store or online. See 3.co.uk forward slash unlimited dash data. Savings on selected phones on 24-month contracts. Ends 5th of December. Terms apply. It's the perfect moment for Christmas shopping at Vista Village. It's magical savings at Vista Village with an additional up to 40% off the village price at participating boutiques. Magical savings from Thursday the 28th of November to Monday the 2nd of December. Magical savings. The pleasure of luxury for less. Vista Village, the perfect place for Christmas shopping. My name's Ian, and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas Centres provide people with food, safety and support, and show them how Crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at Crisis this Christmas for just £28.87. and p. Search Support Crisis Reserve and help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. 24 hours a day at Bloomberg.com, on the Bloomberg Business app, and at TikTok on Twitter. This is Bloomberg Radio. Now, a global news update. U.S.-China trade threat. Will they fly? I'm Michael Toscano. Wall Street's not trading today, but new worries about U.S.-China trade are sinking stock markets around the world. China threatening retaliation for President Trump signing legislation that includes sanctions if Chinese and Hong Kong officials come down too hard on the pro-democracy movement. Will Ripley is in Hong Kong. The China Foreign Ministry, they are accusing the U.S. of bullying behavior, disregarding the facts, and publicly supporting violent criminals. And there could be fallout here. The Chinese government summoned the U.S envoy to China, Ambassador Terry Branstad, just days after basically telling him that the U.S. shouldn't interfere. There are concerns this morning that Beijing and Washington's disagreement could affect trade negotiations. The two sides previously appeared to be nearing the initial stages of a deal. Is that still going to go forward? We just don't know. Fires continue at the site of that chemical plant explosion in Texas, as John Lawrence reports. Port Arthur resident Laurel Amy, among those concerned about the thick clouds of smoke blanketing parts of Texas. I just worry about what we're breathing in. Officials are keeping close watch on the TPC group in Port Natchez, Texas, and a couple of explosions Wednesday have ignited ongoing fires. No word on when they'll be out. There's a mandatory evacuation for people who live within a few miles of the plant. Heavy I'm wind. John Lawrence. Heavy winds in the east are threatening those huge balloons that this morning's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in New York with a decision coming within the next couple of hours on whether they'll fly. More on the wind and snow for meteorologist Derek Van Dam. We've got snow in the mountains and we've got rain in the lower elevations and very windy conditions along the east coast. By the way, that could impact your traveling plans along the I-95 corridor or perhaps at some of the major east coast airports from D.C. all the way to Philadelphia and New York, as well as Boston. And out west, the mountain snow, the valley rainfall could become heavy at times from Phoenix into L.A. Winter weather advisories and warnings in place for much of the western two-thirds of the country. I'm Michael Toscano. I'm Dr. Jeff Gooden, and I treat pain with Salon Pass. That's because practicing good medicine is my responsibility as a doctor. For back or joint pain, I agree with CDC guidance that recommends using topical pain relievers first, like Salon Pass Patched Large. Salon Pass is powerful, FDA-approved to relieve debilitating moderate pain, yet non-addictive and gentle on the body. Look for the green Salon Pass box in the pain relief file. Salon Pass. It's good medicine. Sponsored by Hizumitsu. Are you looking for senior care for your mom or dad but don't know where to start? Hi, I'm Jen London with The Place for Mom. Nobody knows your parent or loved one better than you, and nobody knows senior living better than the experts at A Place for Mom. It's a free service, and we've helped thousands of families find the right place for their mom or dad. There's a place for answers, A Place for Mom. Call today. Call A Place for Mom at 1-800-391-1755. That's 1-800-391-1755. Business reporter Jessica Ettinger te- checks Thanksgiving Thursday money. Good morning, Michael, and happy Thanksgiving. Stocks are coming off. More record highs. Investors are optimistic about trade. Record closes for the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500. Wall Street's closed today for the holiday, but stocks will trade tomorrow for a few hours. The market closes at 1 Eastern. It's one of the lightest trading days of the year. Tomorrow will also be the lightest flying day for the long Thanksgiving weekend at the nation's airports. Today really is all 
about family, a nice meal, maybe some football, three NFL games today, and shopping. Shopping? Yes. Gone are the days when the gas station Mini Mart was the only thing open on Thanksgiving. Many big chains are open by 5 or 6 tonight. While struggling, JCPenney will open many locations at 2. And for the first time this year, Bed Bath & Beyond will be open on this holiday. All right, thank you, Jessica Edinger. I'm Michael Toscano. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. China has reiterated it will retaliate after President Trump signed a U.S. bill backing Hong Kong's protesters. Bloomberg's China correspondent Tom McKenzie says it could disrupt trade talks. Beijing summoned America's ambassador for the second time this week, while foreign ministry officials accused the U.S. of quote-unquote meddling in China's affairs. They also warned that cooperation between the two countries could be jeopardized. Previous U.S. actions, including the blacklisting of Chinese companies and arms sales to Taiwan, have elicited forceful rhetoric from Beijing, but little in the way of concrete actions. Analysts at Citigroup expect more of the same now, with China focused on trying to secure a partial trade deal with Washington. In Beijing, I'm Tom McKenzie, Bloomberg Radio. Amazon plans to hire 200,000 seasonal workers in the U.S. to work in warehouses and make deliveries. That is double the number of temporary workers it hired last year and a sign that Amazon expects a strong fourth quarter. The federal government is making it clear it wants to be in the captain's seat when it comes to getting Boeing's grounded 737 MAX back in the air. The Federal Aviation Administration says it will conduct final approvals of factory fresh 737 MAXs rather than letting Boeing employees handle routine sign-offs before delivery. It's the latest signal the FAA plans to retain full control over all aspects of the grounded jetliner as Boeing finalizes fixes and resumes shipments. The best-selling Boeing model has been banned from flying since March after two deadly crashes. In Washington, Nathan Hager, Bloomberg Radio. The FTSE in London down four tenths of one percent. In Germany, the DAX down a third percent. And the CAC 40 in France down about two tenths. In Japan, the Nikkei off a tenth, down 28 points. The Hang Seng down a quarter percent. And CSI 300 in China, a third percent lower. Global news, 24 hours a day on air. And a TikTok on Twitter. Powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. This is Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. And this is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Brian Grazer. He is the co-founder of Imagine Entertainment with his partner, Ron Howard. He is the producer of such seminal films as Splash, Backdraft, Apollo 13, Liar Liar, 8 Mile. His television offerings include such things as Sports Night, 24, and The Cult. Can I call it a cult favorite? Arrested Development. It is. Yeah, that's funny. His films have generated more than $13.5 billion in revenue, and his television work has done probably twice as much as that. The Producers Guild of America awarded him the David O. Selznick Lifetime Achievement Award in 2001. He is the author of A Curious Mind and most recently, Face to Face, The Art of Human Connection. Brian Grazer, welcome to Bloomberg. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I'm looking deeply into your eyes. (laughs) And in the book, you explain how as a kid... That was a problem. Looking people directly face to face was a challenge. How did that manifest itself and how did you overcome that? So as a kid, I had acute dyslexia, but it wasn't called that then. It wasn't labeled as such. It was just like that kid learning is, disability. Yeah, learning disability. Let's put him back. Right. I was the kid that would let the parents were talking about every night. Let's put him back, kid. Um, but, I, but it was but it was really just, you know, the, 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 the root of that was that I had no ability to read. I couldn't read one word. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even sequence a sentence. I mean, I, I would be out, way out of sequence, and I'd often start from the wrong side. And You've left to write issues also? I do. I still have that. So, so what did you do to overcome the reading issue? Well, I, what I did was I avoided eye contact with... All teachers, all the time. They love that. Uh, no, they don't like that. <laughs> I avoided eye contact. It, it just became... I did that because if you look at the teacher, or or if your eyes are available, in fact, uh-huh. then you'd get picked to answer the question. Or, Brian, come to the, come to the board, you know, the chalkboard. So 
I just didn't want any of those requests because I never had the answer because mm -hmm. it was always based on the material you were to have read and I was incapable of reading and I had a Mr. Polavoy who was teaching me how to read theoretically but it was impossible for impossible for him um, just because of the way the the, the symptoms and root of, of dyslexia itself so anyway nonetheless couldn't read about fourth or, I guess around fifth grade I was started to be able to read a little and but by the way my grandmother I had a gr I had one mentor uh -huh. in my life at the time that really believed in Brian <laughs> right and she'd say you have the gift of gab you have curiosity and you can talk about it and and she'd be looking at my report cards over my shoulder that were straight F's and I'm thinking, oh, wow, she believes in me. And she says, you're going all the way. She had all those isms. You're going all the way, think big, be big. But there was like no empirical evidence whatsoever that I was going to be the think big, be big person. She saw something in you, obviously. She saw something this in me. This is more than just a grandmother's love. This is, she yeah. saw something. Yeah, she, she saw the hints of this superpower called curiosity. Right. And that that is valuable. And if you can use it exhaustively with human beings, you can learn a lot, gain insights, and gain hearts. Mm -hmm. And um, she, if I said that right now to her, if she were alive, she would say, yes, that's that's right. She'd probably be very strong on the hearts. Right. Um, in any event, fifth grade, I could read. And now I realize... If I can read, I can now look at people. Uh -huh. So I started looking at people and, and, and using them also as, as a secondary or primary textbook unto themselves. So I would look at you today, for example. I noticed so much about you, Barry. Really? Ab so much. Um, well, you move quickly. You think quickly. You're very helpful. A little hyper. You... Um, Incredibly smart. Well, now I'm sound. Stop, over, stop. Yeah. Okay, so I don't want. So but go, I did, go on. Go I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, stop, some more. Stop. <laughs> but I did notice uh, quite a bit. So um, you're you're, you're a stu you are a judge, not with me, but you you tend to be a judge of human nature and human yes. character. You do this in the in the way. Uh, this is my pop observation. In the in the material you select to make films, in the casting, I know everybody yes. works with casting director uh, and others, but it looks like that's a big part of of what you do. Well, I'm very I'm very good at prospecting for ideas mm -hmm. that have that haven't been done that have uh, an authentic voice, and or there'll be an idea that's as simple as. Uh, face to face, mm -hmm. but I'm able to granulate the techniques of what face to face means in a way that's interesting and with stories, and that empowers people to, you know, get the promotion they're looking to get, uh -huh. so that they can communicate it and they understand that energy, someone's energy, the energy you bring into a room, that millisecond is the beginning of the Barry story or the right. Brian story. And you don't want anything to deflect that present state of mind. And then you want to be, you want to use your eye contact, and I'm using this in a simple way. You want to use your eye contact as a, as a tool, a bridge, the Wi-Fi into <laughs> human connection itself. And if you're really present with somebody, like just, you know, genuine interest, not transactional interest, but right. genuine interest, you gain so much. Every one of my movies, A Beautiful Mind, Friday Night Lights, Empire's Television, of course, mm -hmm. um, any of the successful things I ever did, Splash, which you referenced, it's all birthed out of like human interaction, human connection, and which would, came into play because of eye contact. Coming up, we continue our conversation with Brian Grazer, film producer and co-founder of Imagine Entertainment, discussing how he decides what films to make. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? 
At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. With a Bloomberg Business of Sports report, I'm Michael Barr. It has been used in Great Britain, and now U.S. athletes, including with NFL teams, are using this to perform better. Altitude chambers simulate training in altitude. The theory is that it increases the red blood cell count, and the cells carry the oxygen to the muscles. Former New York Knicks star Greg Anthony is with Altitude International. Not only does it uh, extend the life expectancy of, a, of an athlete, uh, it also extends the efficiency and the productivity of that athlete. And so when you're investing those kinds of, or making those kinds of dollars, and you have to invest a, a significant portion of that back into those athletes, you know, why wouldn't you want to have a scenario where you can increase their efficiency and productivity, lengthen their careers, and lessen uh, the potential impact of injury? And that is a Bloomberg Business of Sports report. I'm Michael Barr. We just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London. It was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. Then it was time for glow-in-the-dark mini golf. I got a hole in one. Well, three. I'm a bit rusty, okay? There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. EasyJet fly to a wide range of ski destinations from London. So whether you want to go all out on a classic Alps experience or fancy something a little more low-key, it's smoother than ever and you'll be there, well, you'll be there before you know it. Book now at EasyJet.com. Okay, Mr. Smith, tell me what happened. Well, I just sat down when... Pow. Pow? Pow, right in the mouth. And can you describe the assailants? There were three of them. And how are they dressed? With rosemary garnish and a red wine jus. Jus? Jus. Well, it's like a gravy, is it? <laughs> oh. Any potatoes at the scene? Oh, yes. Mashed with garlic. That's a serious assault. There was no salt. Lamb. Hits you in the chops. More knockout recipes at simplylamb.co.uk. What if your email let you see a project's entire history and not just the messages sent to you? What if everyone else on your team could see it as well? Then it wouldn't be email at all. Move communication from inboxes to channels in Slack. Instead of seeing a partial set of messages about a project, everyone in Slack sees exactly the same thing and moves work forward faster. Slack. Choose a better way to work. Get started at slack.com. So do you really think your party's manifesto is plausible, or is it just an election bribe? Get an in-depth look at all the main party manifestos. From public services to immigration, the Times and the Sunday Times will guide you through. Pick up your copy today, or visit thetimes.co.uk. I'm Barry Ritholtz, and this is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Brian Grazer. His work in television and films have been nominated for 43 Oscars and 192 Emmys. Those numbers sound ridiculous. Is that, <laughs> is that right? Um, yes. However, it's not 192. It's 196. <laughs> oh, so I didn't. This is old data. I well, I'm here. Clear. I'm here at Bloomberg. I'm with you. I want to try to be as accurate as I can. Be. There you go. So you do a lot of work that's been recognized and and awarded and rewarded. Tell us a little bit about your process. How do you decide what films you want to produce? Is it the business side? Is it things you want to see? What What is your process like? Okay, because my first success was in 1984 about a mermaid. 
splash splash and it, it's really that became that became very helpful in the way i would start this journey so mm-hmm. basically both the people and the process or no just the the hundreds of people that turned down a mermaid movie because it sounded so stupid to them you go this is the stupidest idea it's like there's no such thing as a mermaid or it's just a, a dumb idea um what you what you learn is that first of all nobody really knows <laughs> and nobody really knows the internal heartbeat of something particularly when it's got a you know a big premise at the beginning of it so the fact that i could do a dumb idea and have it be really successful meant that i should just do things that i believe in that's so, that's the william goldman quote about hollywood nobody knows yes. anything who's a friend of mine who was oh really yeah yeah uh i i love the book um it's what is great. it confessions of a uh, screenwriter or something yeah, like that that's right he, so he describes how everybody passed on star wars everybody passed on raiders et the by the way et i so how do you – are you relying on your gut? What are you doing to I, I rely choose something, by the way, like Splash, mm-hmm. where you're working with Ron Howard, who you obviously have a partnership with. Mm-hmm. You work with Tom Hanks, who you've done multiple films Well, that was with. his first movie, of course. Oh, well, he had yeah. come off of the television show. He did his Bosom TV Buddies. series called Bosom Buddies, right. but we – frankly, we did, discovered him and put him in his first movie. And that so, worked out pretty well for everybody. It worked out really well. We were all yeah. – we've, we've, I think I've made seven movies with Tom <laughs> Hanks now. He's he's quite delightful. Yeah, isn't he? he's brilliant. He's brilliant, brilliant guy, mm-hmm. brilliant actor, a brilliant his and selection seen- process for for movies or television is, is unbelievably great. So, what is your process? What is your selection process? How do you figure out what you're interested in making? I bomb. You'll relate to this. I bombard myself with information all mm-hmm. the time. I make a point to go out of my way and out of my comfort zone to meet new people every day from uber drivers to baristas to you saw me over there with the water getting our water waiting to talk to someone there's just some some stranger right and i just i i i operate on uh, i trust that i will constantly disrupt my comfort zone by trying to conduct a conversation with some someone that's an expert in something that I'm not. So then I have to get through that challenge, you know, the challenge of the language of physics. You you describe that in the book that you made a conscious decision to say, let me find someone from outside of my field, yes, and have a conversation with them. Yeah. What what motivated that? That's really not a very common approach. No, it's it's it's, it's not. Um, what motivated is. I, I asked myself what seemed to be a rhetorical question when I graduated college, USC. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a very good school. But I said to myself, like the day I graduated, what did I learn? Did I learn anything? And I thought, I'm not sure I really learned anything. And then I thought, what, well, what did I learn? I continued to assault these primary universal questions, these simple questions. And you just keep assaulting. I thought, well, I think I, what I really learned for sure is how to, is I learned how to cope, survive, and collaborate in a bigger population of people. Because mm-hmm. that was a certainty. I went, grew up in a, I was a middle class kid, went to a small school prior to that. This was a bigger school. And I succeeded in this bigger school academically and socially and culturally. But I found the whole thing an interesting kind of challenge. So I succeeded at that part. Then I thought to myself, there's got to be a professor or a class that really, really, you know, grabbed me. There was. There was a a Dr. Milton Walpin Uh who taught this very popular class, a 400 class, um, on abnormal psychology. Right. Which was very interesting to people. Because it, okay. So it was a very big class. I never met the teach a professor because it was a class of 300 kids and I thought I'm going to try to go meet Wilton, Milton Walpin and so I was very persistent in trying to meet a professor at USC that, and I'd already graduated he didn't acknowledge you know didn't respond to any of my um, letters so I decided I'm going to go wait for him outside of a summer school class I waited he says to me didn't you graduate I said I did <laughs> but I was really impressed with the, your with the class and your conducting of the class, I really wanted to just have a five-minute coffee conversation. I turned that into an hour 
conversation. Uh-huh. And, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot more even in the hour. I thought, wow, I learned more in the hour than I did in the whole class. And I liked that class. So that I can do this with other people. Mm-hmm. It just made me feel like, well, this is possible. And I was just a little nobody. I didn't even have a job. I was just... You know, a couple of weeks later, I finally got a law clerk, law clerk job. Uh, sorry, which I, by the Warner way, Brothers. I love. I love the story how you got that job at Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's you, a funny. You story. Were, tell the story. I don't. Okay. Just, I don't want to give the. So pen. basically, I met with Will. I, I had the meeting that I just re- referred to with Dr. Milton Walpin, and then I'm in my little apartment complex on Ocean Avenue, and. In the apartment complex, I overhear these three uh, law school grads because I was scheduled to go to law school at uh, USC. I hear them talking about, wow, you know, what a summer. Oh, I, the one guy says, oh, I had the cushiest, easiest job. Right. So it immediately got my interest because I needed a job. And if it's going to be cushy and easy, fantastic. Even better. <laughs> Let's go. So I thought, okay, so I pulled the window back so I could really hear through the screen and drew the drapes so he, they couldn't see me with my ear to the window or uh, to the screen. And so the guy starts talking about the, the job. It's the legal department at Warner Brothers, blah, blah. I get the, the man's name. Doc, his name was Peter Connect, who ran the legal department. He started with Jack Warner. He's, he's, he's probably 80. And I, I called and got a meeting that afternoon with Peter Connect and got the job at 315. Saying, I hear you have an opening for an intern. Yeah. I said, yeah, I'm scheduled to go to USC Law School. I'm a graduate. I hear you need a law clerk. Love to be that person right now. And he said, you're hired. Just like that. Just like that. Unbelievable. Coming up, we continue our conversation with Brian Grazer, film producer and co-founder of Imagine Entertainment, discussing the art of human connection. You're listening to Masters in Business with Barry Ritholtz on Bloomberg Radio. Have you wanted to speak a new language, but you thought it'd be too hard or take too much time? Then go to Babbel.com, download the app, and try it for free. In just 15 minutes a day, you'll be on your way to speaking a new language in just a few weeks. And right now, you can try Babbel for free. Babbel starts out teaching you words and phrases by matching them with pictures. You won't believe how easy the interactive program is. Soon the sentences get a little bigger, and before you know it, you're having simulated conversations voiced by native speakers. And because Babbel is crafted by language experts and uses the spaced repetition method, in just 10 to 15 minutes a day, you'll be speaking the language of your choice with real confidence. With Babbel, you can speak a language. Just go to Babbel.com and start your first lesson in the language of your choice for free. Download the Babbel app or go to Babbel.com and try it for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com. Hey, y'all. Jeff Foxworthy here. Now, if you've ever found yourself repeating the same thing over and over for 75 years, you might be Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. That's why I'm filling in for Smokey to switch things up, because there's a lot more to say. And I should know, because my grandfather was a firefighter, and one of the things he taught me is that the people that love the outdoors the most are often the ones accidentally starting wildfires, which means... Always BYOB. <laughs> no, bring your own bucket to the campfire. And be extra careful with things like burning yard trimmings. Don't just walk away, or chances are you might be starting a wildfire. So, for the love of the outdoors, go to smokybear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the ad. We just got back from a beautiful city break in Bath. Midweek is the perfect time to beat the crowds. Just an hour and a half by train from London, it was so relaxing. We headed straight for Bath Christmas Market. Oh, I can still smell the roasted chestnuts and mulled wine from the chalets. We dropped off our Christmas shopping at the hotel. Then it was off to be spellbound at the Theatre Royal Bath. There's so much to do in Bath. I'm already planning my next trip. Discover the magic of Bath this Christmas. Plan ahead at visitbath.co.uk slash Christmas. EasyJet fly to a wide range of ski destinations from London. So whether you want to go all out on a classic Alps experience or fancy something a little more low-key, it's smoother than ever and you'll be there, well, you'll be there before you know it. Book now at easyjet.com. Something explosive is coming to the home of rugby. When Harlequins meet Leicester Tigers... 
expect fireworks. With tickets from £17 children and £27 adults, Big Game 12 is more than a Gallagher Premiership rugby fixture. It's London's biggest rugby party. Enjoy music, entertainment and a truly incredible atmosphere before the big game kicks off at 4.30pm, Saturday 28th of December at Twickenham Stadium. Go to tickets.quins.co.uk or search Big Game 12. They don't chant your name when you give blood or sing songs about you. But patients and their families will remember you forever because your blood can change their lives. We need more blood donors in Tooting, the West End and Edgware. Bleed for London. Join us today at blood.co.uk. Tis the season to be hunched over your laptop. Not on our watch. In real life, you can fill your senses and your baskets. Feel all the sights, sounds, lols and OMGs. Wear laughing emojis on actual smiley faces. Battery is running low. Take the kids to Santa's Grotto. In real life, you can find just the right present using the most advanced search engine in the world. Your eyes. We can't in real life. Rent Cross London. Free parking for all sleighs and cars. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut. Bird swoop. Gazelles leap. And as the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk. China is threatening retaliation this morning, unspecified in form and timing over legislation President Trump has signed into law to punish China and Hong Kong if those governments abuse the human rights of Hong Kong citizens. Will Ripley's reporting from Hong Kong. There's a lot of gratitude here in Hong Kong for basically siding with the protest movement, which obviously infuriates Beijing. But remember, this is a city that held this election. 90% of the vote went to pro-democracy candidates. So it does give you a sense. Highest voter turnout ever. People on the street they're not mad at the protesters. They're mad at the police and the government. Concern this will harm U.S.-China trade talks and Asian and European stock markets down. Wall Street's closed today. South Korea says North Korea has fired two short-range projectiles, likely from a super-large multiple rocket launcher, into its eastern ocean waters. Fans of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade already on the streets are waiting for a decision if high winds will keep the giant balloons from flying this morning. I'm Michael Toscano. And I'm Ed Corey from the Bloomberg Newsroom. Global stocks are sliding along with U.S. futures after President Trump signed a bill backing Hong Kong protesters. The move raises worries about the prospects for an interim trade deal between China and the U.S. No need to wait until tomorrow, Black Friday, to do your holiday shopping. A lot of retailers are opening their doors today. In a battle to get hold of your holiday shopping dollars, you can begin shopping 5 p.m. local time today at Macy's, Kohl's, Target, and Best Buy. Most JCPenney stores will open at 2 p.m., and Walmart store times will vary by location. But chains like Nordstrom, Costco, The Gap, Home Depot, Lowe's, and TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods all closed. And state laws in Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island prohibit all stores from opening their doors on Thanksgiving Day. Tom Busby, Bloomberg Radio. Food prices are climbing fast in the world's biggest emerging markets, posing a possible inflation threat. Asia's two largest developing economies face a price surge for staple products, pork in China, onions in India, that are central to consumers' diets. Global central banks are approaching the end of the year with a collective shudder at the risky behavior that their low interest rate policies are encouraging. Bloomberg's Greg Jarrett reports. Policymakers from European central banks and the Federal Reserve are among those raising cautionary flags at potentially unsafe investing stoked by their efforts to flood economies with ultra-cheap money. Stock indices from the U.S. to India are at records and low sovereign bond yields have pushed funds into property seeking better returns. Greg Jarrett, Bloomberg Radio. Stocks in London are lower, down a third percent this hour. Same with the DAX in Germany. In France, the CAC 40 down a tenth of one percent. The NIK also down a tenth. Hang Seng down a quarter percent. And CSI 300 in China, a third percent lower. Global news 24 hours a day on air and a TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Ed Corey. This is Bloomberg. 
I'm Barry Ritholtz, and this is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Brian Grazer. He is the co-founder of Imagine Entertainment with his partner, Ron Howard. He has produced such seminal films as Apollo 13, Liar Liar, 8 Mile. Uh, he is behind the television show Arrested Development and 24 and so many others. Uh, his films and television work have grossed about $40 billion. Is sure. that right? Yes. That's a, as good a number That's as fair. any. Yeah. And his most recent book is called Face to Face, The Art of Human Connection. Let's talk a little bit about how human connections have helped you in your career. In your early life, you weren't much of a reader. Right. But you learned that conversations with people became crucial to your intellectual growth and professional growth. How did you reach this insight, and how has it come out even even to this day? How does it matter? Well, I mean, the techniques of which are, are, are embedded in these stories in this book that we're talking about called mm-hmm. Face to Face, The Art of Human Connection, because... You can't really have you can't get you can't get promoted without looking at somebody right. connecting. So, but but I have always tried to have stories that had universal themes. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about a beautiful mind, which uh, which we won an Oscar for, or I did, and it. Um, and the thing about that is that the universal theme wasn't really about schizophrenia and it wasn't about winning a Nobel Prize. It was much more about love. That love, the power of love, is a, which is a universal force, can get you th- through a lot. In this case, it was schizophrenia. Right. And then his ability to win a Nobel Prize in economics. So basically, I found that by taking the opportunity to look at people when I walk through the street in New York as opposed to my phone... Because I can look at my phone all the time. That's always going to be there. And I love my phone. Uh, And it provides me with so much information. But if I'm walking through the street in New York, I'm looking at people. And I'm trying to uh, feel or intuit, like, what's going on in the world right now? I thrive on human connection because human connection is you feel people's hearts. And you don't feel their heart on an iPhone. And they don't feel your heart. And the only way to move people enough to promote you, or in the case of romance, move the girl to want to like you or be with you or see something intrinsically valuable is through their heart, through a spirit. It's just the, That's just really the way it works. And so whether you're in technology or whatever the thing you're doing, you have to have face-to-face connection. Otherwise, you're just not going to adva- advance your cause. Let's talk about some of the communicators you discuss in the books. Okay. Um, some people that you've engaged in conversation and it's changed um, the course of at least entertainment and probably some people's lives. Sure. So I was making a movie with Spike Lee. Which film was that? It was called Inside Man. Shot, oh, of course. Shot right here Denzel in your city. Denzel Washington, yeah. right. So basically I'd known Spike Lee for a while. We both were nominated for Oscars. He for Do the Right Thing mm-hmm. and I was for another movie. And uh, you know, so we met each other under a very privileged situation. Uh, and I loved Do the Right Thing. It was just so inventive in so many ways. Right. Cinematically, uh, he, he handled a pretty heavy subject in a, the most evolved way mm-hmm. cinematically no one has ever done that and I always wanted to work with him so many years have gone by we just never could figure it out and I put a lot of effort into trying to figure it out now it's about eight or nine years later and I have a movie that um, that I'm going to make and he came in to talk about it but we saw it a little bit differently and I walked him to the elevator I pressed the button and it was only had to go seven floors and in those singular moments right he looked up at me like he's never looked at me before i felt it differently uh-huh. and he looked me in the eyes and he said this is the movie i want to make it's called and he pulled it from behind his back it's called inside man i already had another director on it but he looked me in the eyes and he said, i want to make this movie it's going to be successful and more importantly it's going to be a successful work relationship for you and me I promise you it'll be a great experience. Literally an elevator pitch, seven floors. That's what it was. And I felt him. And I, I mean, he really probably did exactly, you know, he, you know, he did one of the techniques that I would describe in the book, actually. But he did it, and I felt the power of it, the authenticity of it. I felt, I felt that I felt his soul. 
Right. And, honestly. And so I said yes. And I let the other director go, uh, which wasn't easy. And Expensive? Uh, it was a little expensive, but worth it. Right. Because this became like one of the most profitable, sure. maybe the most profitable movie for uh, Universal that year. Wow, that, that's amazing. And uh, I, I know the most profitable movie for Spike and his career. And huge for Denzel and, and me. And, and That's fantastic. So it was a, a, real, a real big win. And the, probably as, as importantly, it, we, it ended well. He did provide me a great work experience he collaborated he's awesome he's talented and collaborative you can't beat that coming up we continue our conversation with brian grazer film producer and co-founder of imagine entertainment discussing the business of film and television you're listening to masters in business with barry ritholtz on bloomberg radio Asset managers who sees change to launch new strategies, add distribution channels, or exploit new technology to re-engineer the investor experience are often rewarded. However, in an industry paralyzed with complexity, few act with agility or decisively. Few run their businesses strategically, yet the most competitive managers in the market know with the right partner and a flexible operating system, you can. Go boldly toward change with SEI Investment Manager Services. Determination and operational strength are both essential factors for growth in asset management. I'm Steve Meyer, President and Head of SEI's Investment Manager Services Division. We know that disruptive forces create opportunities around the world. If you see potential and change, our industry specialists will maximize SEI's integrated platform of data and risk management, global investment operations, compliance support, and investor services to position your asset management business for success. Come grow with us. With SEI Investment Manager Services, you lead the charge in a competitive marketplace. Learn more at seic.com slash seize change. Business is constantly evolving. Is your financial printer evolving to keep ahead of the curve? At Command Financial, we are redefining financial printing by providing industry-leading expertise, leveraging technology, and honing processes and best practices. Every day, Command helps SEC registrants, as well as members of their working groups, including securities attorneys and investment bankers, prepare, file, and disseminate regulatory and disclosure documents, such as registration statements, M&A documents, and mutual fund prospectuses and reports. Command provides a full range of services to help you effectively complete your deal, meet your disclosure requirements, and achieve your shareholder communications objectives. Visit our website at commandfinancial.com and learn how we're evolving, not only with the times, but also with your business requirements. Command Financial, redefining financial printing. I love Black Friday. Busy shops, crazy people, average deals. It's so much fun. Said no one ever. So be savvy and do Black Friday the easy way with Smarty. Grab a huge 100 gig data sim for just £17 a month on the Mega Plan. And with no credit checks, speed restrictions or contracts tying you down, you can kick back with the best Black Friday deal around. Now that's Smarty. Search Smarty Mobile to find out more, but hurry, as this deal won't be around for long. See smarty.co.uk for terms. There is simply nothing else like it. Giraffe strut. Bird swoop. Gazelles leap. And as the music soars, the entire Serengeti comes to life around you. This is Disney's The Lion King. Experience it at London's Lyceum Theatre. Visit thelionking.co.uk At Lidl, we're big on getting in the Christmas spirit with our award-winning eight-year-old Queen Mongol blended Scotch whiskey for just $12.99 and our award-winning range of Hortus Artisan and Gins and Gin Liqueurs from only $9.99. Big on a Christmas you can believe in. Now that's big on quality and always little on price. Subject to availability, selected stores excludes an eye. My name's Ian and I run the Christmas Centres for Crisis. Many people in Britain are homeless, stuck in hostels, sleeping on floors, even on the street. You can change this. Our Christmas centres provide people with food, safety and support and show them how Crisis can help them find a home and a job in the year ahead. You can reserve a place at Crisis this Christmas for just £28.87p. Search Support Crisis Reserve and help someone take their first step out of homelessness this Christmas. Thank you. Every day it's a little harder. Disney's Frozen 2. Anna, Elsa, Kristoff, Sven. 
worldwide phenomenon has returned, captivating critics everywhere. I believe in you, Elsa, more than anyone or anything. With big laughs and even bigger songs. Disney's Frozen 2, in cinemas now. I'll bring the snacks! It's hard to enjoy your daily yoga routine when your mind is on your next VAT return and how to avoid the usual mistakes. But with QuickBooks, the new VAT smart scan technology does the work for you. As the deadline approaches, it checks for duplicates, looks for anomalies, and reviews VAT codes. So your biggest struggle is touching your forehead with your ankle. Search for QuickBooks. Perfect for making tax digital. QuickBooks. Backing you. 25% off. This week at Tesco, we're taking that exact percentage off wine and fizz when you buy six bottles or more. So, technically, every fourth glass is on us. Tesco. Delivering Christmas for a hundred years. 18 plus excludes Express and Scotland Max 36. Exclusions apply and 2nd of December. Going, going, gone. Some things just don't hang around. Like a great deal in Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Right now, you can get the Samsung Galaxy S10 for just $29.99 a month. But this deal ends Sunday 1st of December. Catch it before it's gone. Tesco Mobile's best ever Black Friday event. Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Best ever Black Friday based on range of products in promotion. Was £35.99 now £29.99. Offer ends 1st of December. 36-month credit agreement. Rolling monthly usage agreement. Subject to status. Phase policy applies. See tescomobile.com slash terms. Hiya. It's been a crazy few months. So we're going back to Butlins for a little family break. We're not so little anymore, are we, Stacey? Tell me about it. Luckily, there's loads to keep us all busy, day and night. We love all the fab pools and water slides and the amazing live shows. Don't forget the crazy golf, the go-karts and the wrestling. Oh, I do love a bit of wrestling. Calm down, Stace. It's a family show. The Butlins Black Friday event is now on. You can save up to 40% on all family breaks. Book online at butlins.com. China is threatening retaliation this morning, unspecified in form and timing over legislation President Trump has signed into law to punish China and Hong Kong if those governments abuse the human rights of Hong Kong citizens. Will Ripley's reporting from Hong Kong. There's a lot of gratitude here in Hong Kong for basically siding with the protest movement, which obviously infuriates Beijing. But remember, this is a city that held this election. 90% of the vote went to pro-democracy candidates. So it does give you a sense. Highest voter turnout ever. People on the street they're not mad at the protesters. They're mad at the police and the government. Concern this will harm U.S.-China trade talks and Asian and European stock markets down. Wall Street's closed today. South Korea says North Korea has fired two short-range projectiles, likely from a super-large multiple rocket launcher, into its eastern ocean waters. Fans of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade already on the streets are waiting for a decision if high winds will keep the giant balloons from flying this morning. I'm Michael Toscano. I'm Barry Ritholtz, and this is a special Thanksgiving Day edition of Masters in Business. Today, my guest is Brian Grazer. He is a producer of television and film. Let's talk about some of the work you've liked and helped uh, motivate or animate your career. Uh, as a kid, you were a giant James Bond fan with Sean Connery. Yeah, I was. Who, who isn't? Is, uh, those were just the greatest films. No, of- those were fantastic. They took you into... Uh, uh, an escapism universe, a fantasy of like, wow, I can do anything. I can get the cute, I can get the hot girl, kill and, the bad guys, and kill the bad, save guys, the kill world. bad guys, save the world, and drink a martini all at the same time. Right. So you don't really do action films, though. You really do films with the big dramatic content. Yeah, with real. real Emotion film, right? If there's, I believe action, emotion is the destination for films. If there's action, it sets up the the emotional tension, Correct. like Apollo thirteen or Backdraft. Yeah. yeah, stuff happens. Yeah, but it tees up. Or even the, the Da Vinci Code, we had him running and doing right. things, and it wasn't even in the book where he he was that active. But mm-hmm. but we 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 found a way to manufacture that. So, have you ever watched a movie and said, "God, I could never have." I never would have seen that idea. What a, what a great concept. It's just so outside of my uh, comfort zone. I wouldn't have done that. Or conversely, have you ever seen something and said, oh, there was a great opportunity here and these guys blew it? Oh, my God. All, my, all those. I've answers yes to that. Okay. I've seen concepts not correctly executed, where I think they blew it. Right. But I've blown it, too. So, so. I, I have movies that I could cite, which I won't do now, 
you just the endless assault of decisions you have to make to make a movie, raise the money, make a movie, turn it into some cinematic masterpiece, hopefully. Um, so, um, but I have had there the movie that a couple of movies changed my life. Really, the one movie that got me into show business really that made me think that everything's possible was Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddle. Oh, sure. Because he violated every single rule of ethics, morality, and language. And, and, uh, uh, and the fourth and, wall. He and breaks the fourth, the fourth wall. wall at the end. And it worked. So I thought, wow, this was like a, the first shock comedy. <laughs> and I just called it that to myself, like a shock comedy. And I thought, that means you can really do anything. This is right. so exciting. So the first 17 years of my life, that's all I wrote or produced was were comedies. You know, Nutty Professor, Liar, Liar, Parenthood, I could go on. But the point is, as I just did that, Boomerang with Eddie Murphy and Steve Martin. Anyway, but... The movie that really changed my life was Steven Spielberg's E.T. Mm-hmm. Because I realized when I experienced that movie at the Cinerama Dome in Hollywood, every, but when the movie ended, everybody was at peace. Uh-huh. Everybody felt good. It, he, that movie elevated people's moods to a really positive place. It, it created a transcendental moment for human beings where they didn't have to rush to get their car and they weren't aggressive. And it was it, it empowered you. It empowered possibilities. And I thought, I want to try to make that be my goal, like to aspire. I, I never reached that. And honestly, I, I've done really good work. But that was at a very, very, very high level. And uh, I deeply admire it and mm-hmm. became an aspirational, uh, professional aspiration. That, that's a touchstone in your career. It was. Film. Yeah. Huh. Well, well, to knowing the power of film. Like the power of film, great stories that have redemption can move people, can create good vibes in the world. And that's actually my goal with even with my television shows or my movies. I just I really want to entertain people, engage them so they have a great time, but make them but put out good vibes. So so let's talk about a touchstone and moving people. Okay. I'm a giant arrested development fan. Okay. The voiceover narration, it's beyond a meme now. It, that has become a cultural touchstone, especially in the current era. You see it all the time. Someone says something on TV that turns out to be nonsense. Mm-hmm. And in parentheses, you get narrator. It wasn't. <laughs> the, the line straight yeah, from, from Ron Howard's voice. When you guys were first putting that together, how did the narrator come about? And did you have any idea this was going to become as giant a little cultural touch known as it's become. No. No no to all those things. Basically, this was a project that was primarily cooked up with the I was part of it, of course, mm-hmm. but the collaboration of Mitch Hurwitz who created right. it and Ron Howard who collaborated on its birth and of course does this voiceover narration. And I Which had, by the way is just Pitch perfect. Yeah. Like you recognize his voice, but if you're not paying attention, you don't know who it is right away. Correct. And and his, well, his he's smart and talented. His deadpan is perfect. Yeah, it is. And I it know is. throughout the show there have been little hints that it's him. You yeah. see a hand of the narrator with the ring that says <laughs> RH That's on it. Funny. How did how did that come about? Um I think it was probably Mitch's idea and Ron was excited to do it. Mm-hmm. And knew he could do it because he understood the tone really well, and he has a great voice. He's a incredibly he's a really good actor, and his style of communication in real life is not that dissimilar. He's he's a very unaffected person. He's uh, completely unpretentious. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a he's incredibly he's confident, but unpretentious. And how did how did you guys meet and become partners? We met because I had this discipline of curiosity conversations. Right. And I looked out my window while I was a television producer at Paramount, and I yelled out the window <laughs> to Richie Cunningham. Right. I, he was you Richie. didn't call him Richie Cunningham, did no, you? No, I said, Ron, Ron Howard. And um, and then he sort of scurried away. 
<laughs> and he, then I called his office and said, would, would he consider meeting me? And then we had our first Hollywood lunch. Right. Uh, which he, it was his first Hollywood lunch and his, because he never did Hollywood lunches. He was just working. Right. Again, he's just a, he's a guy that just works and gets on it. But so he never did a Hollywood lunch. He did one with the Brian Grazer. That worked. And then we pitched some ideas together. I pitched two ideas. One was Night Shift. One was Splash. Michael about Keaton, right? Michael Keaton, right. And Henry Winkler. That's right. And that was the first movie we did. Even though I wanted him to do The Love Story Mermaid, he wanted to do an R-rated film. Uh-huh. Um, and so he did it. And he did it really, really well. It Relatively became, small budget. And it was fairly very, successful, right? It was immediately successful. Mm-hmm. Because the chairman of Warner Brothers at the time was named Bob Daly, who was... He had just left CBS. He sold it immediately to CBS for the entire cost of the movie. So we're in profit. Guaranteed. Hour breaking. one. Right. Yeah, exactly. Huh. And then um, where did the script from uh, for Splash. Splash come from? Splash came because I I had this, I started this, this idea of what if I could meet my perfect girl? Right. And what would that girl be like? What would those characteristics be? How would she communicate? Um, the purity of all of those things. And I just kept defining it and redefining it and redefining it. Where would I live? I thought, well, would it ever happen in L.A.? No. I would never meet the perfect girl in L.A. Okay. Where Although would eventually be, you do. Where would it be? Yeah, which I did. But my, my Veronica actually was from Bloomsburg, uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. And she was only in L.A. for a day, but you're right. <laughs> Very, wow, you're a good reader. <laughs> Thoughtful. Um, so in any event, um, so I just kept assaulting a, the simplicity again of a question that I postulated to myself. Uh-huh. Is it possible to meet a perfect girl? Is it possible? What does a perfect girl look like? What would that be? Then I defined it. Then I wrote it. Then I superimposed this whole mythological image of imagery of a mermaid because mermaids have power. Mm-hmm. They have beauty and sex appeal. Mm-hmm. They have simplicity and they're unattainable. And that makes the love story harder and gives you a third act. <laughs> right. That that's interesting. And and it's fil- the film I've always adored. It's filled filled with great characters. John the little cameos from John, John Candy, Candy are just hilarious. Well, John Candy was hilar- was so funny. Um, but we talked earlier today on the show about my grandmother who supported me. It was mm-hmm. a Jewish grandmother, a little tiny Jewish grandmother. And she had all these isms. The isms were like think big, be big. Uh you, it's just as easy to love a, good, a rich girl as a poor girl. Um, you have problems, wash it down with Chris, with chicken soup. She had a crazy... Uh, every one of these isms. I took all of those isms that Grandma Sonia said, and I gave them to the character of John Candy. Right. And that's how they all kind of happened like that. He says, that's think so big, funny. be big, my friend. And then there, my grandmother had kind of a decadence, weirdly. And I extrapolated further on the decadence, you know, like my grandmother smoked. She got divorced early in life, like you know, when she was like in 1940, no one got divorced. She did all these kind of things that were, that were unconventional. So I, I put a lot of those those things into the character that John Candy played. And then real writers came in to rewrite me mm-hmm. because my script was terrible. It embodied the idea. And, and, but but Lowell it was Hansen, the first draft. Bob Luman, it was the first draft. So, um, but it was Lowell Gans and Bob Lou Mandel that were really gifted and incredibly funny. We have been speaking with Brian Grazer. He is the co-founder of Imagine Entertainment and has produced numerous film and television shows. If you enjoy this conversation, well, be sure and come back for the podcast extras where we keep the tape rolling and continue discussing all things entertainment related. We love your comments, feedback, and suggestions. Write to us at mibpodcast at bloomberg.net. Go to Apple iTunes. Give us a review. Be sure and check out my weekly column. That's at bloomberg.com. Check out my daily reads at ritholtz.com. Follow me on Twitter at ritholtz. I'm Barry Ritholtz. You're listening to Masters in Business on Bloomberg Radio. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. But when we introduce a new stimulus... Save the food. We're helping to stop food waste. Save the food. For tips and recipes, visit savethefood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. Hey, NFL fan. Can't watch the game? Can't be there? No biggie. 
With your TuneIn Premium membership, you already have an all-access pass to every team and every game in the league. Amazing, right? Steps up, floats it towards... At the goal line, it's intercepted! Listen live as the action unfolds, or on demand when you can. Anytime, anywhere, all season long. Right side, it is caught. It is in for the right side for the touchdown. The key to- Search NFL today. On behalf of all of us here at TuneIn, Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Hope you saved room for some great listening. Your live sports, on your drive to your family's house, or set some relaxing.